Okay, gentlemen, let's get our pipes all warmed up and let's get to singing. Oh, yeah, we're gonna be the best quartet ever. Shin, there are only three of us. I know that, but it, it, it makes it funny. All right, let's get warmed up and sing. Ah, ah, ah. Hello, collectors. It's Steven here yet again with another Shin Godzilla review. This time, NECA's go around with the design. The collector community so far has been a bit divided on this guy, with some saying he's perfect and others not so much. So, what's the verdict? Is he amazing, or is he doo-doo? Or is he more reasonably somewhere in between? Because let's face it, that's where some figures lie. Well, sit back, relax, and let's take a look to see whether or not he's worth adding into your collection. Okie dokie, so this guy is a bit complicated for me. The sculpt is pretty much nice with equally nice paint application, though it does have a few drawbacks, which I think are totally reasonable to question given NECA's track record with being loyal to source material with so many other figures and lines, most notably with their recent Alien Covenant figures, which, though they're not accurate to the CGI models, they're very accurate to the practical effects. If you want to know what I'm talking about, check the first pinned comment down below to see actual references. Now, of course, no figure is perfect, but let's jump in to take a very, very close look to see what I'm talking about. First off, the head is off overall. It's very Shin Godzilla, you can tell that the idea was captured, but it's just not there all the way. The problem with the head itself is it's too large and it's too long, making Shin look something like a crocodile, and it sits too far down on the neck. Furthermore, the mouth is off. Instead of giving it detailing in the mouth where the tongue normally would be, take note, Shin does not have a tongue, we get excessive cheek webbing and questionable jaw paint similar to the GMK Godzilla. Eyes don't do the figure any favors either, since they should be looking down and to the side instead of forward, which was also an issue with their 1954 Godzilla. This is disappointing because NECA can, has, and will do better at the same price point. And to the argument of they'll never use this sculpt again, we all pretty much know that an Atomic Blast or Awakening version is coming sooner or later. Regardless, it's not a deal breaker for everyone, and the actual details in the sculpt and the paint application are executed rather well. As we move down the rest of the figure, this is where the figure really shines. The sculpting is exquisite, especially when we're looking at the chest. The paint application here is similar to the Monster King series, and there should be a card popping up to link you to that review, in that it looks a bit scratchy. This isn't a bad thing. It adds to the chaotic nature of the design overall. The rib cage, especially here, and the pronounced sternum make the figure look more skeletal, just like the actual design that we saw on the screen. The arms are nice and tiny, strong hands and all, with great shading for the claws. For such small parts, the attention to detail is really awesome, and it is so appreciated here. The thighs, the pelvis, the hips, just like the rest of the figure with the paint application sculpt, are spot on. I have to commend NECA here. Really nice job keeping it this consistent, which also shows that the head, <sighs> that's very sad. Now, of an interesting note, on the hips of Shin, there are little pokey parts. On one side of Shin, it's sort of rounded off, but on the other side, it's really spiky. Yeah, it's asymmetrical, but this is interesting in that it contributes to the idea of Shin's rapid evolution, or it's just an oversight when sculpting. I don't know, I'm just pointing it out, you decide whether or not it's a good thing or it's a bad thing. Now let's take a look at the feet, because it's the last thing to look at on the main body, and yeah, features nicely shaded toe claws, but something to take note of, there are little claws on the design that are supposed to be popping out everywhere over the feet, and we don't get that here. Sure, it could be because of the price and the size of Godzilla, but they're not present. Now for the dorsal plates. Pretty mixed here. Sure, they're sculpted really well, but I think the paint is a bit heavy-handed. They're a mix of red, orange, and purple paint at the base of the plates, which it doesn't necessarily look the best. Again, they're sculpted well just fine, but a little less of the chaotic paint would have resulted in a more accurate look. Regardless, though, this does look very chaotic, and it does really remind you of Shin Godzilla. Now the tail. Mine's got a quality control issue we'll look at in a bit, but for now, let's look at the overall design. The tail is the same as the rest of the figure in terms of sculpt and paint all the way up into the tip. So, as you would expect, the details are great and the paint application is pretty sweet. 
but when we get to the tip, very questionable. Again, the idea of Shin Godzilla is sort of captured here, but the actual details are lost. For some reason, Shin has these weird pus globs on it, and for some reason, the second face here isn't present at all. Why is this prominent design feature missing? No one will ever know. So overall, Shin's design here, the way it's sculpted and painted, it's pretty awesome. But the head, the main focal point of the figure, doesn't necessarily look the best, and that little feature of the second face on the tail is missing. Does this deter everyone? Not necessarily, but it is something to take into consideration. Alrighty, articulation. So what we have here is pretty much the standard for all NECA Godzillas. So if you know one, you pretty much know them all. So the jaw opens and closes on a hinge. Little bit of a rocker, but not too, too much there. So you can get them to open up really wide, but at that point, the mouth webbing uh, doesn't necessarily look the best because there's a gap. So yeah, only reasonably open it. So about that far, it looks pretty all right. When you go to close it though, you notice that there's a little bit of an underbite. Yeah, so we get a decent range of where it looks good and then not so much, but that's okay because you really got to push to get that to sort of happen. So you know what I mean? Then the head plugs into the neck on a ball joint. Twist it and turn it. You can get Shin to look around. Pretty cool. Mine pops off with ease. Some heads have been popping off in the packaging on store shelves. So if you see a headless Shin on the shelf, check around near the bottom of the package. That's where the head should be. Uh, do take note that this is sort of where, like I mentioned before, the head aids in whether or not it looks really good or really not so good. So if you have the head pointed down, Shin looks pretty all right. Yeah, I think we can agree this is a nice pose for Shin. Everything looks fine and dandy. But once you start to point the head upward, then we get this, oh God, what have I done crocodile alligator look to it. Yeah, not necessarily the best, but in terms of looking all the way up, that's about as far up and that's about as far down. And then we can get him to look a little left and right, but then the head pops off for mine. The neck plugs into the body on a ball joint, and we get some nice range of movement there. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool, and we combine that with the head movement. Some pretty cool poses. That's about ah, as far down as the neck goes. That's about as far up, which is really neat. Moving down, we have the shoulders, which plug in on ball joints. Pretty cool. Yeah, spins. Then we have, I'm going to zoom in on this one because some reviewers have been getting this wrong. Let's clear that up. All right. So we have the elbows hinge and then they swivel, right? So you can spin those around. So it's like a bicep swivel. The ball joint here on mine, it's kind of frozen. Like I can get a little bit of movement, but I was able to get it in a pose and that's about, that's about where I'm keeping it. So yeah, the elbows have a swivel hinge. Now the wrists. Let's see if we can get that. Nope, that's about as far as we can go here. So let's move it a little closer. Alrighty. So the wrists, they're not true ball joints. As you can see there, there's a hinge. So they move in one direction, and then they swivel. So they're not true ball joints. So if you go to move them side to side like this, that's not happening. Swivel hinge. Keep that in mind. You don't want to break these, okay? Okay. I think that's pretty good there, yeah? Alrighty. So, now you know how the arms move. We got pretty good movement there. Continuing on, we have the ab crunch, which is pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Pretty good movement down. Left, right. We can turn them all the way around. Woo! That's a pose for Shin. Pretty nice movement out of that ball joint. For the hips, we have a ball joint. Really can't get too much use of it side to side, but that's pretty good. We actually get some sort of pull down movement, as you can see there. That's pretty cool. Swivel hinge knees, which are right here. They spin. And then right here, at that cut in the shin <laughs> area, we get a ball joint, which provides a little bit of ankle rocker movement, and you can spin them around if you would need to. Something to take note, if you go to stand Godzilla up, the legs are uneven. And that's not even something that's sort of rectified by the joints. 
they're just uneven. This one seems to be shorter than the other, and that seems to be a problem with the sculpt, not the joints. This is a problem that other people have had to. So anyway, tail. You've been noticing in some of the shots that I've been keeping it up. That's because it takes some patience, as you can see here, uh, to get it in a good pose pointing up. So we have a whole system of ball joints here. We have a ball joint here, 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 and here. I'll talk about this in a bit. And this section here has been loose for plenty of collectors. So as you can see, yeah, doesn't work too, too well. Very, very loose here. Kind of loose here, not so much. It's pretty tight, and then this area is pretty good. The connection here where it plugs into the body is also pretty loose, but as you can see, the weight of that tail is just not supported. Kind of floppy. I don't know if that's just bad engineering or if that's just a matter of the weight and physics and something that, you know, you just can't fix there. So that is what it is. But we do have a ball joint to tail. And as you can see, it's pretty nice range of movement. So when you get it to work, as you'll see in some of the shots later in the review, and as you've already seen throughout the review, you can get it to work. And don't get me wrong, you can get it to work. Once you have it resting on a nice surface, you can get some typical Shin Godzilla poses where the tail's sort of up in the air behind him. But you do have to work to get the tail to pose nicely because it is not difficult to get the tail to pop apart. As you can see, pretty easy to do. You know, not a big deal. So the tip of the tail here, <laughs> bendy wire, right? Yes, it is. But as you can see on mine, um, it's not really holding a pose, except for at the base of the tail down here. Why is that, you might ask? Let's zoom in and see. So for some reason, at the factory, the bendy wire was not inserted correctly into the tail. It was only inserted for about this portion of the tail. So yeah, I don't have full range of bendy wire movement in the tail. And as you can see there, there's also a hole in it. So I'm thinking that maybe the bendy wire was inserted here and then came out here or maybe inserted there and poked out there. I don't know. I don't know what the issue was. But this is credit to NECA. They are indeed sending me a replacement. So it's actually here. There was an issue with um, the post office and... Not enough postage, yada, yada, yada. But I do know for a fact that it is here. I've seen the package. So good on them for replacing that for me. Fantastic. But uh, just something to take note of, you know, that this did happen. And if this should happen to you four or five years from now, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Because they're not going to have replacements available all the time. And the retailer you buy it from, they may not have returns. So just keep that in mind. So overall... Godzilla's articulation, it's pretty good, and you can get some really nice poses out of Godzilla, but there are some points where maybe in the hips that there could be some improvements made, and there are some quality control issues for mine, like let's say on this shoulder that's really kind of stuck and I can't get too much movement out of it, and this, that could definitely have had some improvements made. Now for accessories, we get none, but some would say at about a $25 price point, it's to be expected. Unless you wait for the Atomic Blast or the Awakening version, which should probably be coming out either sometime this year or next year if they get to it. Then you should expect accessories for the same price point. Thankfully, though, if you have other figures or other accessory packs, they do go really well with Shin Godzilla. So if you want to create a nice action-y scene, you can do that. Here's one example that I just threw together really quick. And the size comparison. He's about as tall as a normal 6-inch scale Godzilla, which is good, though some may have wanted him a smidge taller for scale reasons. But regardless, he takes up a good amount of space on the shelf. So, buy now, skip, or wait for that deal. Shin looks nice in regards to sculpt and paint, but the head is enough to sway some people from not making the purchase, and it certainly was almost for me. If the neck was a bit longer so the head could sit up higher, this might alleviate some of the weird looks it could pull off with awkward posing of the head, and I think this would almost fix the problems entirely. 
Without factoring in the head or the tail tip, which is missing that second face, the sculpting and detail is impressive compared to what else is on the market, both in and out of the price range. Now, without mentioning other brands in specific, that comparison will come in a different video. It would be difficult to say the sculpted details aren't good, and it's wonderful we can see Shin captured like this in action figure format. Articulation is about average for a NECA Godzilla, being able to pull off some nice poses but lacking in some areas. And of course, my quality control issue does this no favors. But again, NECA is correcting that, but again, if this were to be two or three years later when this figure is long since out of production, what are you going to do? The lack of accessories is expected since we're probably getting an Atomic Blast version later. In short, for $25, NECA did a solid job with this release and got a Shin Godzilla on store shelves that is not only easily accessible, but it'll also fill the hole for some collectors in getting that awesome Shin Godzilla into their collection. However, knowing what NECA's capable of, it just misses the mark I and others know they can hit. I'm looking at you, 1954, and even you, Cherno Alpha, both which have only been released once so far in that they haven't been retold or repainted for other figures. Again, arguably, Shin is a nice figure, and some are going to absolutely love this. I enjoy it with some issues aside, but NECA can and should step it up for future releases. Is this a good figure? I would say so. Almost to the point of saying absolutely. But could this figure have been better? I really, truly think so. Well, that's it for this video, but that doesn't mean you need to close out just yet. There are a few other videos that just popped up on your screen, so go ahead and click on those to watch some more of my videos. And then there's the description to check out, where I've linked to where you can get this figure or others like it, and the credits to see how this video was made, so be sure to check that out. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, and subscribe. I love hearing from you. Thanks for watching, collectors, and I'll catch you in the next video.